Hi, and uh, welcome to this installment of Frank and Mary here in Westboro. If you haven't seen this show before, my name is Art Bergeron, and my day job is as an elder law attorney at Myrick O'Connell. Actually, our offices are right here in Westboro, uh, but this is not about my day job. It's about my friends, Frank and Mary. If you've seen my presentations before uh, in the area, you know that Frank and Mary's goal in life is to live in their house until they die and be buried in the backyard. And if that's Westboro, that means right here, they don't wanna move away to live with their kids. They wanna be right here with their friends. And so the point of this show, if you identify with Frank and Mary is to know the people that you need to know and the programs you need to know about in order to stay right here in Westboro forever. So my good friend, Shelby Marshall, who uh, is my co-host, we've been doing this show now for just ages from uh, almost before she was a famous politician, which is now getting to be like a long time ago. She finds these great guests for us to talk to, and we've got some super people today. Shelly, whom do we have today? Hi, good morning, Arthur. Great to see you as always. I'm very excited uh, to uh, have this program today and specifically our guests and the content that they're going to bring to us. I'm thrilled to welcome our Chief of Police, Jeff Flory. Hi, Jeff, how are you? Very good, doing very well. Thank you for having us. Great, and we also have with us Sergeant Mike Daniels. Um, Mike, great to see you. Good afternoon. Great to see you as well. Thank you guys so much um, for joining us. Um, and they, these guys are here to talk to us about an important upcoming article um, and project here in Westboro. Uh, the article will be on our, our annual town meeting warrant, which is on uh, Saturday, May 15th. So for those of you, just as a reminder, that meeting starts at nine o'clock. And um, Chief and Sergeant are going to talk about um, the body worn cameras uh, initiative that's that is uh, the police department is undertaking. So, without further ado, because they're the guys with the information, uh, I'm going to turn it over to them so they can tell us what it is and why we're doing it. So, again, thank you uh, for having us. Um, and just as a brief intro, um, I've been here as your chief now um, for over three years. And in that three years, there's been a lot of change, a lot of change. And as we know, there are a lot of issues going on across the country uh, that, that affect your police department right here in Westboro. And, and our goal, and Sergeant Daniels is also the supervisor that's in charge of our community policing unit. He's also a rights officer, um, is to make sure that we're transparent and to make sure we have the best training and equipment possible for our offices to avoid uh, some of the things that have happened across the country. We are as much against uh, police brutality and violence as anyone, um, we, we agree with, with everyone that, uh, that uh, training is, is critical, equipment is critical. And, and we looked at body-worn cameras, it's, it's very costly. And just to educate the folks at home, um, you know, basically the total amount of this project uh, for over five years is $169,914.50. Year one, uh, we need 64,706.50 to implement this program. And then it's 26,302 a year to keep it going. And I'm gonna have Sergeant Daniels explain to you uh, some of the reasons why that is. But as, as we always do, thinking outside the box, uh, we decided uh, that we would apply for a grant through the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Sergeant Daniels will explain that. Uh, and then we decided to, we got the maximum amount that, that we could be awarded. Uh, and then we had to come to the town and say, do you support this program. And, and, and the reason why, we really firmly believe um, that this is going to help the police department. We have had some negative interactions where people haven't been that nice to us, would have been nice to have on video. And quite frankly, as your chief of police, if your officers, our officers, our police officers, Westboro police officers, do something wrong, we want to make sure we take care of that as well. So uh, this is, for me, a program that uh, is, a, is a major change. Uh, in working conditions. Uh, there's a huge commitment. Side of Daniel will explain, you know, some of the issues with redacting these videos. We could have three, four or five officers on scene. You know, we have to redact. It's very time consuming and they're recommending that, uh, you know, a supervisor above a frontline supervisor, uh, such as a lieutenant, be the one redacting. So uh, this is a lot of work. There have been police departments that have been basically kind of shut down because of the public information requests and the different issues that come with the storage of these uh, these devices and everything, but I'll have Simon Daniels explain that. But again, as your chief, um, I firmly believe this is gonna be a tool that is going to help the officer. It's gonna help uh, if there are court cases, it's gonna help 
if there's liability issues in my, in my humble opinion. And um, we're in the stage right now where we are uh, currently writing the policy um, as, as we're talking right now. Uh, I will then with Sergeant Daniels and our union officials sit down with them because it is, like I said, a change in working conditions. We have to implement impact bargain this. So hopefully I'd like to get this program off the ground uh, late fall, early winter uh, at the absolute latest. Uh, but there's also some, some other good news and Sergeant Dan is going to explain, I was approached by the Secretary of Public Safety to, to participate in the program. He's our liaison that there may be future funding sources for us. And also I really need to um, mention, acknowledge uh, Representative Danielle Gregoire. Danielle, she contacted us um, in the city of Marlboro, in the town of Northboro, and she has um, a funding amendment in the budget uh, to maybe potentially cover the cost of this warrant article. So I'm, I'm hoping this warrant article is passed, but I'm also hoping that who knows, maybe I won't need it or all of that money uh, due to uh, the participation in this program and also uh, to the really the, the yeoman's work by Representative Gregoire to try to find uh, a funding source for the three communities that she represents. And that's what it's about. It's about teamwork. It's about working together, all of us uh, in town. Uh, like I said, uh, as COVID's lifting, you're going to see us out there more and more. Um, and uh, we're really honored uh, to serve and we want to continue uh, with the movement of being transparent uh, and being held accountable. And I think uh, these, this initiative is going to help us get there. And I'm going to turn it over to, to uh, Sergeant Daniels. Um, like I said, he's done a tremendous amount of work on this. I am so thankful to have such a talented staff uh, and I look forward uh, to the challenges ahead. And, and I look forward to working uh, with you folks to ensure we provide the very best in public safety to those we serve. So the floor is yours. Very good. Um, thank you for having me. Uh, good afternoon. Um, so kind of just going off of what Chief Lori said, we've been actually working on this project for quite some time. Um, initially, we started looking at grants back in February 2020. Um, this was before uh, the George Floyd incident happened. Um, and unfortunately, at that time, we were unable to secure a grant because there's typically, you know, at the federal level, there's a checklist and a score sheet um, that they look at before giving us the funds. And quite frankly, Westboro didn't, didn't meet any of the requirements to even score anything on the score sheet. Um, some of the things that they look at is the town's financial health um, and also manpower, which uh, Chief touched on briefly. Could we support the program? Um, and at the federal level, we were, we were unable to secure the grant. Later on, uh, during the summertime, I think it was in, in July, the chief sent me another, uh, another grant uh, that we looked at. We were able to, I, I wrote it, uh, we weren't, again, <laughs> able to secure the funding, but third time's a charm. So at the state level, uh, we reapplied. I used the uh, statistics that we had from before and we were awarded about $39,000 uh, for the program. So, you know, it, you know I'm glad that we, we were able to secure the funds, but the thing is, is that we, it, it, it is a costly program, as the chief said, he gave you the total. Um, and, and it's costly mostly because of not just the equipment, but because of the storage. Um, we need to ensure that we can uh, store whatever, I mean, if you can imagine, uh, wearing a body camera eight hours a, a day, that's a lot of data um, that's collected during the course of, of, of a shift. And of course, some of these things are going to be running sometimes 16 hours. Um, so being able to store and house all that, that storage at once is very costly. And of course, it's not something that we can uh, utilize Google Drive or a Dropbox to, to and I know th those are some of the comments that, or some of the feedback that we, we've been getting. Um, Typically, the software that is used to store the, the video footage is propri proprietary. Um, so that means that the uh, storage works specifically with the equipment that we purchase. Um, so there's that. Um, and I think uh, last time I checked, it's about uh, close to $25,000 per year just for storage. Um, and we're looking at purchasing uh, about 40, 40 cameras. Um, and these cameras are going to be worn uh, by our line level super supervisors, our first line supervisors and our line level patrol officers, because they're, essentially they're out there doing the work. Um, so there's that. 
Um, with regards to what's needed to maintain the program, uh, the, the federal government and state government recommends someone who's at the executive level, um, someone who can, I mean, it, it takes a tremendous amount of time and dedicated time to go through those, um, uh, that footage. A lot of times, you know, during the course of even, you know, uh, sometimes on my four to 12 shift or on the midnight to eight shift, we have guys that are, you know, they're, they're out there, they're, they're doing their job. And then, you know, they generate three, four reports a shift. And sometimes that's going to require us to go back um, to review some of the things that they, they've done. Um, and then, you know, of course, if there's a public information request or a prosecutor or a defense attorney is requesting information, there's also th that end of it, um, which can be time, time consuming. So if you can imagine having four or five public information requests, you're gonna be going through sometimes hours and hours of video. Um, and the reason why we need to go through that is uh, there's, there's certain things that can't be shown. So, you know, for instance, we stop a motor vehicle, um, you know, we don't want, you know, the license plate being shown. If there's juveniles around, we need to be able to, you know, redact um, those people and, and remove them from, from the video footage for privacy purposes. So, you know, and that that's obviously very, very time consuming. Um, so that's, that's why, uh, as the chief said, that um, the recommendation for executive level uh, personnel is, is highly recommended. Um, Sergeant Daniels, can I just ask a, a two questions um, sure. sort of while we're on this? Um, so one, do you envision that the footage that you get from the body-worn cameras, and this is also a question to you, Chief, um, would be used for training purposes? So, you know, there was a, an incident, you know, um, that there's a learning opportunity. Um, would you envision being able to use that as a training tool um, for um, your staff. Um, and then the second question is, with respect to redaction, um, will we be using an outside entity to like kind of physically redact? Like I wouldn't, I don't know, uh, Sergeant, maybe you have that, you know, skill set or you're gonna learn it quickly, <laughs> um, but, or do we uh, have to sort of outsource that to actually go through the, you know, the cutting or the shading of shapes and whatever that redaction process is? So I'll answer your second question first. Um, so Sergeant Luce and I are, are working on this. We actually got trial cameras um, and I'll show you those in a second. Um, we already have, so we have tasers and the, uh, the tasers that we have are made by a company called Axon. The body cameras that we have um, are also made by Axon and they actually talk to each other. So when you draw your taser, the camera automatically turns on, okay? Um, so with that being said, Sergeant Luce already has access to the uh, software that we would need to utilize the body-worn camera. So and that's one of the reasons why we looked at this particular company. Um, and because we have the trial version, we're already working with the software, trying to figure out how it works. And uh, between the two of us, we're able to um, do redactions and through some of our, our trial run tests. Um, we, we're not, we don't have anybody wearing them. Right now, at this point, we're on a trial and we're looking to see if, if uh, the software is, you know, number one, good enough. Is it easy enough to, to, to tackle? Um, we don't want anything that's complicated because time is obviously of the essence when we're uh, fulfilling uh, public information requests. So, um, so and I'm, I'm happy to say that so far, so good. We're able to do a lot already and um, we can easily teach anyone else to do it. Now, as far as a training tool, and I think the chief could probably add something on there. That's, that's one of the reasons uh, why I think body cameras are important. It's an important piece of uh, police technology because it'll allow us to look at, and again, we're not perfect, right? So sometimes police officers make mistakes, um, but it will give us the opportunity. It will give the first line supervisor and the executive command staff the opportunity to really look at some of the things going on. What, what are the officers doing procedurally? Are they being safe? Are they treating people fair? Are they treating people professionally? Um, you know, in, 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 in reviewing those things, yes, we'll have the opportunity to go back to the first line supervisors and say, hey, we noticed that, you know, this was a little off. Could you, you know, maybe talk to your subordinate and, um, and you know, train them and, and, and figure out 
where, where the issue was. So yes. Uh, or to your point, even situational awareness, right? So, right. you know, you review something where, you know, obviously you want to reduce liability and, and increase safety for, for all, but particularly, you know, staff. So if, right. if something happened and then there was an opportunity, maybe something was missed, uh, you know, I don't know, some, someone moving into the scene that the officer didn't have a good line of sight for, you know, how could you, you know, uh, how might you uh, approach that situation differently? So that, that makes perfect sense. I'm glad to hear that. Right. And yeah, he, he is, he's hundred percent correct. I mean, we're going to utilize this as a training tool. Um, and, and part of the, you know, it'll be an in-house uh, system where we redact the videos. It'll be a Lieutenant uh, that'll be in charge of that. Uh, and when we talk about Axon and, and the ability uh, that it's kind of uh, married in, in a way to the taser software, uh, we were able to, to have a discount um, of $9,379 because we have certain things in place already because of the tasers. We obviously got multiple bids um, and the, it just so happens the company that we're leaning towards now, um, it's, it's the most cost effective, quite frankly, but they're also on the state bid list as well. But we wanted to make sure we did our due diligence. So we will be redacting them. It's gonna be a lot of work for that supervisor. Um, basically it's going to be, uh, you know, we're probably gonna have to create a, a position um, this being one of the duties and responsibilities. Uh, but at the end of the day, 100%, we wanna make sure if we're making mistakes, we wanna see it and we wanna take corrective action. We debrief uh, on major incidents all the time. This is going to be such a useful tool for us to take a look at what we're doing right and what we're doing wrong. And I go back to, you know, to counsel, you know, I mean, video, it speaks volumes when it comes to what did the officer do when you can actually see and with multiple officers there from different vantage points, but wait, wait a minute, uh, the officer acted according to policy and according to procedure. And it takes that guesswork out. It takes that, well, I don't believe you out. You know, it, I think it's a win-win for the town. Uh, I think it's a win for the police department. And quite frankly, I think it's gonna protect uh, our staff with some of the negativity and, and don't get me wrong i want to be clear 99 percent support in this community is phenomenal but the one percent of times it can be it can be something else and uh, to be able to show people no this is how the encounter actually was i think um it, it's going to be a huge benefit uh to our officers and and i'm not getting um pushback that i'm hearing right now i think this is the direction our profession is going, uh, whether departments like it or not. Um, I think, um, you know, we need to embrace this. And, and with the different police reform coming in post and everything else, I mean, we're a part of the accreditation process. I mean, we're here in Westboro, it's a professional agency uh, and, and that's what this program is all about. And again, not to be redundant, but to be transparent. And Sergeant Danums has done a phenomenal job uh, getting this off the ground. People don't realize we've been working on this for a while. Like he said before, the issues that we're facing now, but it's so expensive and we're so understaffed and there were so many needs in different areas, training being one of them. And as your question alludes to, it will help us with training. Perfect. Well, I think that, you know, for those that, you know, hear, oh no, we may need another person to do this. To me, that's, it's a no brainer. Um, and, and I think that this is also very responsive to the police reform, you mentioned that chief, um, that, uh, you know, the public wants. And I think we've seen, uh, unfortunately, at the, at the cost of, um, you know, livelihoods and lives, um, the, the value of uh, body-worn cameras to clarify I situations and, and, and to uh, immediately strip away uh, levels of doubt or questions. You know, there, there may still be interpretations of what's happening but you immediately, you know, uh, take away, um, you know, things like how long did an incident occur or what was the initial interaction or all the other things that you'll be looking at. So I think this is um, a really effective use of uh, uh, certainly your department's time, but taxpayer dollars um, to uh, continue to enhance public safety not, not only for those that receive the, the services, whether they be good or bad for your department, I don't mean good or bad in service, I mean, whether they're a criminal or they're just calling for help, um, as well as to you know, enhance the safety of your, your staff. So to me, it's, it's a no brainer. I'm so glad you guys have pursued it. It's, 
Shelby, I think it's uh, it's just amazing. And I think the way that you present it, and I think this this goes to the heart of kind of the point of the Frank and Mary show so that people can hear this, you know, it, you know, in a place that isn't just like the town meeting floor, because the, the, the way you're presenting it, you're really showing the, the how revolutionary this is. The, 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 the way in which this really, you're, you're really using this as, as a way of kind of transforming through this kind of, you know, through, this, through, the, through the training, right? You, you're, the ability of officers who have been trained in a number of ways to be constantly getting better because just constantly, which is just such a wonderful, that's terrific. But, but I, I have a question though, because I know that there was a lot of reference to redacting. And when I hear redacting, I'm like, you mean like just getting rid of the evidence? You know. What I mean? So can, can you can you talk a little bit about that? And because one of the things that occurred to me as you were describing the the, the process was that our like our cameras literally on all the time. Because as as Sergeant, you had mentioned, it sounds like they get turned on if a taser gets drawn. If the taser isn't drawn, are the cameras always on? Are they sometimes on? And then can you just talk a little bit to that, the, the redacting question? I wasn't sure if the Lieutenant who you're talking about was doing redacting because in response to freedom of information requests and therefore you needed to kind of control what was being given out, right? Or if there was something that was kind of a, a constant redacting just in order to try to deal with the incredible volume of, of, of visual that you're gonna be generating every eight hour shift. I'm, just, I'm not understanding that. Chief, if you want to take that one. Um, I mean, just briefly, just to kind of summarize before, and, and you know, two of the biggest issues that we face, obviously failure to supervise and failure to train. And when we talk about these cameras, um, they're, they're gonna be turned on by the officer. Uh, from what I'm, I'm understanding that there's technology that if an officer uh, to, uh, has to take out his firearm, that the cameras will turn on. There's also, I've, I've heard that when the blue lights go on, the cameras go on. So there's a bunch of different ways that, that the cameras can be activated. Uh, every 120 seconds, the camera vibrates. It lets the officer know that it's on in case he forgets to turn it off. Um, when we're talking about redacting, what we're talking about is what Sergeant Daniels touched on uh, briefly is there could be people in the video that they have privacy rights. So we have to take the, that image out. It could be like he was saying a plate number on another vehicle that's not involved or someone's house. So there's a whole host of things. And in my understanding, and Saji, I'll let you go further on it, but it could it, just one video alone could be ours. Uh, right. Take care of that, that, you know, editing or however you want to call it. But the crime itself, the suspect, the officer, all that, no, none of that is going to be redacted. That is going to be obviously uh, for the, for the courts to see, uh, for the defense attorneys to see, for the suspects to see. And for, as Sergeant Daniel said, for the supervisors to see, hey, if we're doing something wrong, we need to retrain. Right. But Saj, I'll let you um, explain further, um, or answer those questions. Sure. So one of the questions was, uh, does the, the camera stay on all the time? So the technology we're looking at, um, at the beginning of the shift, the officer turns on the camera. So as soon as they turn on the camera, it operates on what's called a buffer system. So uh, it creates a, and we can, we can regulate it. It could be 20 seconds long, it could be a minute. So it'll constantly record, but at that point, it's only recording uh, visuals or video, no uh, audio. So as the officer is wearing it, it's constantly recording. Um, and the reason why this is, the, and here, here's the other part, that buffer, once the you know, 60 seconds or 120 seconds is up, it deletes the previous what, what happened before. So there's always a new new um, new buffer or, or new video created as time goes on. Um, and the reason why this is done is because if an officer, let's say they all of a sudden they get it, they have to get out of their car quickly and something happens um, and they forget to hit the button on on their uh, camera, the camera's already on and it's a, a, already recording that 60 second buffer. And when the officer, let's say they, they have to jump out, chase somebody and they catch someone and they go, oh no, I, I didn't turn on my camera. We already have 120 seconds or 60 seconds recorded. Um, and then they, they then activate the rest of it. So it's constantly recording, but it's also deleting footage. And this isn't being done by the officer. It's the, 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 uh, the programming of the, the camera itself. 
Um, so I, I think that answers your question is that- It, def it definitely does. But it, and it also makes me appreciate how hard my job is today. Because as I told you and the chief at the beginning, my job is to do comic relief, which I provided none of, but also okay. to keep time and we're out of time. I can't believe it. This is just mm -hmm. like, so I guess my observation, Shelby, would be, I know this is coming up for town meeting and hopefully this really helps in terms of the, you know, the Warren article participation and the knowledge of people. I think it would be great if these folks came back because because as they said, they're now developing the policy for how to be dealing with the cameras, right? Yep. So as that has evolved, I think people would really be fascinated to understand kind of where, where they where they where they have come down in terms of what the policy is going to be regarding great these. Great idea. This is just a wonderful show, and it's just All great right. that you're doing it. Wonderful. And I'd like to thank you for having us. Uh, we'd be more than happy to come back at any time. Uh, and and just so the folks out there that are that are listening or watching, if you have any questions, please reach out to us. Uh, we're here. Um, you know, to, to serve the needs of the community. And like I said, I started with, you know, we're honored uh, to be a part of the Westboro Police Department. If be uh, best number to call, if somebody were just curious about this, would this really be Sergeant Daniels? And, 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 where, and who should they, and where should? They can contact dispatch and just ask to be transferred to the police department. If he's not working, uh, you'll put it to his voicemail or, or my voicemail and, and someone will get back to you. Shelby, this was terrific. Th th thank you very much, Chief. Thank you very much, Sergeant. This is just a great, wonderful thing that you're doing. Shelby, you keep getting great people. We got to have the, our, 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 our ratings are going to go through the roof with these guys. <laughs> so they have them back. All right. All right. So thank, thank you. Thank you all. Thank you and folks, much. we hope you enjoyed this show. Call if you've got questions about this. This is a big deal. These guys are really trying to something. This is revolutionary. Give these folks a call if you've got questions, and we'll look forward to seeing you on the next installment of Frank and Mary here in Westboro. Thank you very much.